we're in the midst of the fourth revolution. Uh, many people ask me, what is, uh, well, what were the three revolutions? Revolutionary War, Civil War, and the Civil Rights Movement was the first three. We're in the middle of the fourth. We have to recognize we're in the middle of a, of a war, a revolution. If we're not uh, aware of that right now, which half of my people are not aware of it, is, is that my responsibility is to wake them up. And if they choose to stay asleep, fine. But we have to come together as warriors right now because we are in the middle of a war. And there's certain things you do when you're uh, in the middle of a war. You have to prepare yourself. You have to condition yourself. You have to understand the opposition. Who is the opposition? The white male supremacist system. I'm not talking about white people. I'm not talking about white women. I'm not talking about white men. I said the white male supremacist system. It is very present. It's in each of us. We have been complicit up until this time. And my waking up requires me to own the fact that, white, that I am afflicted with the white male supremacist system. I have depended on white, those systems to control and contain my life. It is a time for liberation. So as we experience this thing called manhood, is we're being called forth. I want to give a call out to the women in our lives because they have stepped up their game far further than is required. They have stepped into the voids that we have vacated. And we have to recognize that. Every time I go to a conference or a leadership function of any type, two thirds of the women, two thirds of the uh, participants are women in the room. There ain't no excuse for that. It's no excuse, no explanation for that. But they are, they are, the, they are feeling the warriorhood a responsibility that we have vacated. I want to come back to the main uh, point that I wanted to talk about. We are the greatest individual players in the world. Greatest individual players in the world, but we're the worst team players. And I remember that uh, old uh, Kentucky basketball, uh, Texas El Paso game. Adolph Ruff made a comment in the movie, by the way. He said, you have to keep at least one white boy on the floor. Otherwise, those Negroes, those black boys, will they'll just run rampant and play school ground ball. And that's what I see happening in our community right now. We're playing school ground ball. We have to up our game, got to up our game. So gamesmanship is one of the things that is necessary. You have to understand that we're playing not to lose rather than playing to win. And you recognize on Saturday evening before NFL game on Sunday is a if the game plan is planned not to lose, that team is destined to lose. And we've been playing not to lose. There's a different consciousness that required when one is actually uh, developing a game plan to win. We recognize we're already behind the eight ball with the white male supremacy system and set us up in all facets of our life, education, medical, politics, and economics. It was set up for the white uh, male to win. There's no system in place today in America that was not set up to serve the interests of the white man. No system has been set up in America that was not designed for the white man to win. We have to wake up and recognize unless we create our system, unless we have a counter strategy, we are destined to lose. And we continue to hold on to our little marbles, hoping that we'll somehow, somehow, some Messiah will come and save us. Game over. So we, uh, one of the things that we recognize is, is that we're stronger together than, than individually. And we have to create, structurally, we have to create black male support groups. We have to form black men. What's the requirement for forming black men? We got to till the soil. We got to plant good seeds. We've got to nurture and water the, the soil in order to have a good crop. We have been playing by a scenario that was imposed upon us that said, oh, well, you know, we'll just, clear the field and the weeds that grow up out of, out of those weeds, we'll have some wildflowers and we'll pick those wildflowers and let them, and we'll call them leaders. That's a game, that's a game that was created and imposed upon us and afflicted on us. And it's time for us to recognize that game is a losing game. Um, I appreciate uh, Michael and Baba Ted for me. Um, you know, sitting and thinking about uh, what do we do, need to do as men, 
Um, one of the things that came to our mind was is, is we need to live in action. Um, you know, the, the academic exercises, uh, we can't we can't live that way. We, we, we need to live in action. And when I say action, um, I say that doing the work of community. And when we say community, when I say community, I look at community and I start breaking it down. Uh, I can't really talk about the community if I'm not doing right by my family. That's the that's a, that's a, the next smallest unit of community. What what are we doing for family? How do we take care of our family? How do we uh, uh, interact? How do we build our family? And then I break it down to another unit, the smallest unit of community itself. And what are we doing for ourselves? How do we build? How do we maintain ourselves? so that we can, we can be given to family, so that we can be given to the broader community. Uh, so when I think about living in that action, it's a, a lot of uh, internal things that we must do. And a lot of things uh, we need to do to take care of ourselves. Are we eating right? Are we exercising? Are we, do we have some kind of spiritual uh, practice? Do we, do we, how do we interact? Um, with ourselves? Are we being kind to ourselves? Um, and then we can do those things with other people and we can do it genuinely uh, because we we practice it on ourselves. So, you know, being living in action with ourselves, our family, our community. Um, um, we, we also need to, as a man, as a, as a grouping of men, um, we need to do for self not look for handouts, not talk about what the system is or isn't doing as much as understanding the system and doing for self. What, one of the most powerful things I read was uh, one of Kwame Torres' book, Black uh, Power and Liberation, where he talks about coalition building. And we talk about coalitions and coming together and bringing people together, but either you, either you own the table or you at the table. So you go, you're going you're gonna to be a meal on the table or you're going to be at the table. And the only way you can be at the table is if you're doing the work. Because other than that, you're asking for charity. You're asking for somebody else's generosity. So we need to live in that action and be a part of the work. Um, when we go back to community, talking about uh, uh, in, in a community aspect, compassion, the word compassion, the word compassion means suffer with. That means doing work with someone. It doesn't mean you, 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 you necessarily just tell them what it is or this is my experience, but it's doing the work with. Uh, so these are the things I think of. And then I, I think about understanding our space. Um, I filled a, a number of different roles. And whenever I'm in a different role, I try to find out what I can do from that space. And I try to figure out how I can operate from that space. What is my asset in that space? not who, who I'm supposed to be or who I, what this image of myself that I made up, but what can I do from this particular space? Um, from volunteering in community to working for a county supervisor to uh, running a nonprofit, it, those are different spaces. I have different responsibilities. I have different assets. I have uh, a different role. And so we all need to evaluate where we are in our space and our role and work together. Um, I can't fill all the roles, so I'm, I'm going to need to lean on Baba Arnold. I'm going to need to lean on Baba Ted. I'm going to need to lean on Brother Galen since he's not a Baba. <laughs> and, and, and how does that, how does that interact? How does that, how does that work? And, and, and leaving that space for each other to do work because we all need to engage in the work in some kind of way. In some kind of way. And it looks different for everybody. And we need to understand that and not compare it and say, well, I did all of this because somebody, everybody got a different kind of role. Everybody role is not to bring home the bacon. Somebody got to take out the trash. Somebody got to cook the bacon. We all have different roles in, in community. But it, again, it goes back to self. And I, I appreciate uh, Baba Ted talking about uh, us having groups and space like this for us to work on self and us to be able to, to do that self work because we say self, but we can't always do it just ourselves. Mm -hmm. So knowing when to ask for help, knowing how to ask for help, and being available for that help. Uh, it took me a long time to learn that. Uh, I, I grew up in West Oakland. You don't ask for help. 
play football, you don't ask for help. Went into the Army, uh, was the infantry. It, it was push and drive on, never ask for help. It took me a long time to learn to ask for help. And as men, we need to, it's, we need to understand that's part of being a man is uh, being able to ask for help, even when we're dealing with ourselves. And with that, I'm complete. Uh, just the experience and the life that you bring to the table. And I want to just thank the ladies that are participating. We are stronger with you and because of you. So I just want to say thank you, everybody. One of the most important things we as Black men must do is to prepare for the upcoming shift that's what's going on in life all around us, not even in America. But we have it in Africa, New Zealand, uh, Greenland, Australia, all the way around the world. There's a new shift that's happening. When was the last time that you saw the homeless population in the Bay Area and maybe even in uh, Seattle the way it is now? Everywhere you go, there's a homeless encampment set up. Please pay attention because that is the new reality. When was the last time you saw people wearing masks and foregoing summer concerts because they were canceled? Not canceled because the entertainers couldn't come, but canceled because everything was canceled. When was the last time you saw civil unrest at the height that it is now? And I'm not talking about black people or other disenfranchised people marching for the rights to be human. But I'm talking about people not caring, robbing stores, retail malls, everything. It's just, when have you seen it at this height that we have? Please pay attention because it is the reality. I could go on and on, but the question is, what must we as black men do in times like this? The answer is to get ready and change, get ready for the change that happen, that's happening. We must, it is imperative for ourselves and our families to get ready for the, this transitory uh, uh, phase of life. If you don't have a job, don't sit there and complain, learn a new trade. If it is a situation where you have a job and it has dried up or it's no longer due to the COVID virus, become stronger in it. If it's a situation where you need anything, you need to build a coalition, as Galen said, to rely on each other. Once again, the new reality is we must depend on each other. Black men, we must get ready for this change. We have no excuses, none. If you need help with something, you need help with medical care, there's doctors around. If you need help becoming literate, there are people, there are teachers around. Right now, as it's, that's how right now, we're failing. And then some cases, some statistics say, by the time 2050 hits around, which is only 30 years away, we will be a lost cause. So it is imperative once again that we get ready for this change, to prepare ourselves for this change. Today, this time that we're living in right now, we must take action. We must change the way we think. We must change the way we see women. We must change the way we see ourselves. We must change the way we see, we think about money. We must change the way we think about fame. We must change the way we see, think about our spirituality. We have to change. We have to prepare ourselves for the next stage in life. Change is uncomfortable. It is, it is for me and it is for a lot of people, but that's no excuse. Right now, as it stands, we're here right now because of change. We usually meet together. We usually break bread together. But right now, we're over technology. 
We must learn how to use technology. We must learn how to be dependent on each other without being in the same room. We must be held accountable. And now that states is we must change the way we think. We must prepare ourselves for the new change in life. It's not only in America, but we're talking about worldwide. We're changing the way the dynamics of using money. The dollar, the ruble, the yen, all that's going to change. Right now we're dealing with digital currency, not just cryptocurrency, but digital currency. Whether it's your ATM card, whether it's PayPal, whether it's Vimo, we once again have to change the way and prepare for the new change in life. As for men, think about it. Right now, there is an all out war on the patriarch, patriarchal uh, position. They make no bones about it. They want us to be submissive to everything from homosexuality. And I'm not uh, putting a damper or trying to say anything negative towards it but they're trying to take away from our masculinity. They're trying to take away the way we see ourselves. Once again, we must acknowledge this as a new reality where they would rather see a man in a dress or a skirt than a man that's with his woman or his wife and being with his children. But we cannot attack it with the same tactics that we have before. We cannot attack it with violence. We must attack it. We must be prepared to learn how to fight because it is a new reality. Um, first of all, I want to give uh, thanks and praises to our ancestors for bringing us together. This is not an accident. The folk who are on the call are on here on purpose. And I want us to know that because we have purpose. Secondly, I want to thank you, Brother Galen, for the incredible work that you always do in your commitment to our community. I want to thank our sister for that beautiful meditation. If we did it, it put, put us at ease, and it's a way of living. That meditation the sister gave is a way of living. And last of all, and, and most of all, I want to thank you, you brothers and sisters in the audience. I want to talk about two or three things. I want to talk about how we got here. Uh, I want to talk about family. I want to talk about individuals. I want to talk about five envelopes and voting. So I'm going to do this as fast as I can. Number one, we are incredible people. I had a project in Africa for 10 years in Zimbabwe. And we are a communal, communal people. We're not an individual people. We have come to this country and been brainwashed to think, I can do it. I can't do it. We can do it collectively because clearly our collective thinking is much more powerful than my individual thinking. So we have to move away from individualism. That's a Eurocentric concept. We are communal people, and we do best when we come uh, 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 together. How do we get here? We got here on boats stacked 18 inches. Measure 18 inches at your home. 18 inches on deck after deck after deck. Yeah. Those of us, many of us died. But the point I want to make is we're the survival of the fittest. We're the most fittest people in this country. We got to recognize who we are. We've right. forgotten who we are. We need to recognize uh, um, who we are. Um, in Africa, the reason they brought us is because we knew agriculture. Um, uh, we, knew, we knew blacksmithing. We knew a lot of different things. So Native Americans could not do it because they didn't have the experience we had of having vast water uh, networks. And other people they brought in couldn't do it. We did it because we are the survival fittest. We're the first society in the known world with African people. And that's us. That's who we are. Um, living is an action word. Living is an action word. So when we talk about living, we talk about action. If you're saying the same thing at 50 that you said at 30, you're, you're stuck. You're stuck. And some of us still stuck because we're still doing, excuse my language, the bullshit on the corner that we've always done. 
and, and we have to learn from each other. We have to turn the corner into something positive. Um, so I'm going to talk about family for a moment. So family is about being involved, being present. And family does not necessarily mean my immediate family. It could be my partner. But it means that I need to be present. I need to be involved. What are we doing in the life of our children? Are we proud of ourselves? Some of us say, well, you know, I didn't have a father in my home. Well, be the father that you didn't have. That's who you are. Be the person that you think someone ought to have been uh, uh, to you. We need to have emotional, we need to have check-ins with our family ongoing. Our family checks in every Sunday at 11 a.m. on Zoom. And there's no reason not to check in with somebody on an ongoing basis. And we need to check in with them emotionally. How are they doing emotionally? Are they anxious? Are they depressed? Is something going on with them? How are they doing financially? How can I help you get to where you want to get financially? How are we doing spiritually? <clears throat> it could be religious or spiritual. You don't have to go to church to be spiritual. It's a way of being in your heart. <clears throat> and how are we doing physically? Are we exercising? Are we going to the doctor? What are we doing to take care of, 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 of our temple? So if I ask you to drink some, some motor oil, you think I was crazy. But we drink motor oil essentially when, when we eat at McDonald's, those hamburgers, the shakes, etc. And so we have to take care of our temple. Um, I want to talk for a moment about musk ox, those, the uh, bison. The bison put the weak and the old and the young in the middle, and they get around them to, to protect them. We need to get around our community and protect our community because it's who we are and what um, uh, we have. Um, I'm looking over my notes. I want to make this brief. And now I want to talk about us as individuals briefly. And so the question is, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I, what is my life purpose? Have I set out to take a moment and jot down two or three sentences of who I am and what I'm about, or do I just go along day to day? So what is my purpose in life? What am I getting out of life? Am I pleased with what I'm getting out of life or am I not pleased? If I'm not pleased, then what do I do about it? Um, what daily impact am I having on my life and the life of other people? Am I being selfish? Am I reaching out to people? Um, and then, um, 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 oh, I'm going to skip down to the other part because I want to get in on the five minutes. All right, bro. I, I want to talk about the, uh, real briefly, uh, five envelopes. And, and I want each of you to get five envelopes. I want you to get an envelope to understand how much money you have going out every month. How much are you putting out every month? What is your budget? The second envelope is what, what is your credit? What is your credit? And you want to get that off because you don't want to pay them a penny. And they charge us a high interest because of our FICA score. What is your FICA score? Learn about that. So the second, uh, second envelope is credit. The third envelope is savings. The fourth envelope is investing, and the fifth envelope is the money you have to spend after that. So people say, I can't save. Saving is a practice. You save a nickel. You make a, a, and a commitment to save a nickel every week, a nickel or, or $5, whatever you can do. And, and so, and savings is for what you want to spend. You want a new car, you want new clothes, that's savings. Investing is putting money aside for the future. And, and then and, and the last envelope is about what you have left over to play with. We spend our play money that we ought to be saving and investing. I'd be happy to, to talk about those five envelopes later on. And the final thing I want to say is we got to vote. I don't wanna t I'm not going to tell you who to vote, but I was a SNCC in, in the South, in Atlanta, and we fought for the right to vote. And I want to make sure every, every one of us votes because 
it's it it's our statement of our citizenship in this country. Uh, one last thing, Galen, if you permit me, I was just, I took ten young people to South Africa June last June a year ago, and this brother who is a mayor of a small town, he said, um, he said I've been to the USA twice, and he said. I noticed that you people don't claim. He said, you built this country. You built this country in Brazil. He said, you ought to claim it. So I claim this country. This is my country. You are my people. And I want to see the best for my people in our country. So we need to take claim of what we are. We need to have purpose. And I will close by, as I always do, the longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on my life. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It is more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failure, than success, than what people think of me or do. It is more important than appearance, giftedness, or skill. It will make or break a person. The remarkable thing is that we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day. We cannot change the past. We cannot change the fact that people act in certain ways. We cannot change the in, in, invisible, I'm sorry, the inevitable. The only thing we could do is the one thing we have is our attitude. I'm convinced that life is 10% of what happens to me and 90% of how I react to it. So brothers and sisters, let's react in a positive way with our attitude because we are the greatest people in this nation.